I'm kind of nervous right now because I'm so excited to join this camp and meet you finally. I have been a contributor to NPM for a couple of years now, and I have seen a lot of great things happening in this community and on GitHub. But since I'm from Japan, it's sometimes hard to join the interesting discussions on pull requests or issue reports. So today, I'm here to talk to you about some of the communication issues from our differences faced on GitHub on a daily basis. To start, let's see NPM, who am I? And pretend there's a long option. My name is Daijiro Atwachuda on GitHub. I'm one of the NPM contributors responsible for the pre-version and post-version folks. And have contributed other bits and pieces to over 40 patches. I'm always looking to join open communities related to Node.js, like an uh, inter-working group in Node.js, or Node School, or yeah, something like that. And the other side, um, recently I joined the team Mystic. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean in Pokemon Go. <laughs> Not that it matters, but it matters. And I have always been interested in diving into new and different culture. I used to mainly do this by getting involved in OSS development projects on GitHub. But last October, I took a big jump and relocated from Tokyo to Amsterdam. And today, here I am in Auckland for this camp. It seems like almost a round the world trip, doesn't it? <laughs> so it's true. Node.js will take you around the world if you are a dedicated developer. <laughs> well, yeah, I think most of you here is a Node.js developer. So you have probably been asked something related to Node.js by your friends or colleagues. Um, months ago, my colleague sitting next to me got confused like this cat and asked, I get the error when I run npm install on your repository. But she didn't give, give me much detail. So I asked, OK, show me your npm debug log, please. And she gave me the file. I read the log. And it was easy. So I said, easy. There's a syntax error in your package JSON you updated. And you are using the old version of npm. So you should fix the syntax error first and update the NPM version as well. Five minutes later, she said, OK, it's fixed it. Thank you, Bill. I think it's a quite general conversation. And in this case, it takes only 10 minutes. But in a global OSS project, it can take a week to resolve because of some gaps. One of those gaps is time difference. If the issue reporter lives in Tokyo and an um, NPM developer lives in New York, there are 30 hour uh, time difference between the two. For example, the reporter asks the same question at 10 AM in Tokyo. I get an error when I run NPM install. 10 AM in Tokyo, but it's 9 PM in New York the day before. And the developer might be doing something really in, in, um, important things, like uh, drinking a beer. So <laughs> maybe she or she doesn't get the question until the next day, their time. So they don't actually look at it until 10 AM the next morning. And eventually, she said, show me your NPM debug log. Now, it's 10 AM in New York, but 11 PM in Tokyo. And after a 30-hour delay, the issue reporter finally gets a response. Now, we know Japanese developers are very hard working. So of course, the reporter immediately replies at 11 at night. <laughs> and in this case, a single conversational ball spends 30 hours going, uh, going around the world. 
So imagine there is another 30 hour delay for the New York developer to send back the final <laughs> answer to our developer in Japan. So the same question that took only 10 minutes to resolve with my colleague sitting next to me has now 26 hours, and it was an easy question. This is one of the main pain points in communication on GitHub. Unlike the real synchronized face-to-face -face communication or real-time chat on Slack or IRC, what we have what I call a synchronized communication. Oops. And another major gap is the language difference. Well, the case I just talked about is fixing a tiny bug, but questions on GitHub can be a lot more complex. And the more complex the question, the harder it can be to ask it clearly. In OSS, we are working with a global community of people whose first language isn't always English. Sometimes it can be so hard to explain an issue to other people depending on what language we speak. Sometimes the result just doesn't make sense. And it creates more back and forth to try and reach understanding. But beyond the questions and issues, there are feature requests which are much more complicated conversations because it usually becomes a deep, interesting discussion, plus many people jump in on the thread. So it's not just one no one anymore. Now, we are going beyond time and language differences and adding a new dimension, number of people involved. It sounds like a network size. The cost of the conversation is in proportion to number of participants. It can be reckoned up by Metcalfe's law, like n times n times n minus one per two. And in this equation, the more participants, the more time is spent communicating. And let's draw the lines on the world map. Actually, it was so hard to add all of the line manually. <laughs> but yeah, this is what exactly we are doing on the feature request. Then this question determines the complexity of the discussion in global OSS development. Complexity equals distance, um, means like a time difference, times language differences, times network size, uh, means like a number of people involved, like I said. And we can separate the equation into a communication issue and an organization issue. Since our communication is like a sync process, we can use the same solution as for handling the async process in Java coding. And in JavaScript, VanillaJS has promised all to effectively handle async processing. But in Vanilla English, we don't have a method to do it for us. So we have to do it ourselves by increasing the details and clarity of our questions. Reporters give enough detailed information and those answering should try writing clear answer. Easier said than done, I know. So here are some solutions or tools to handle them. For reporters, documentation work can be helpful before they ask as a pre-process. You know, recently issue template is added by intern Emma, and readme, week, and the contributing markdown are also useful. So let's increase the detail and the clarity of our documentation. And for those answering, it's really important that imagine the actual issue uh, reporters are having if even they are missing any information. An um, easy way to understand their problem is reproduce. So use the same version of the Node.js with MVM, use the same version of an MPM with MPM Brew, I build it, and use the same OS with another laptop. And if you don't have it, go Amazon.com right now. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, this is what I have been doing for a couple of years in NPM. Also, there's a good way to handle the language and time differences. It's good having a localization community. 
Here is an example I did. I tried to open the issue tab on my Forkle repository, and a developer uh, report an uh, issue immediately related to multi-byte characters. Then I created a batch, and next week it was merged. So it's an effective way to supporting localization community with the focuses on an um, active contributor. And next is the uh, organization. Actually, we cannot avoid this problem entirely in global development. And I think the discussion is ongoing about this challenge. The only thing we can do is keep having fun and working together to try and shrink the gaps whenever we can. Putting our brains to work on the issue constantly. We are a developer and we love efficiency, but we don't have to always have a technical solution. Some of these problems can be solved socially, right? And last but not least, I never could have made it this far over the years without your support and your warm welcome like this and here today. So I really appreciate the community, the CLI team, and Forest for taking me in. All right. I hope to see you all on GitHub. Thank you very much.